Today I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite topics, coffee. So first of all, did you know that coffee is the second most consumed beverage in the world after water? And it can be a powerful superfood. It's a potent nootropic and it has incredible nutritional value if it's prepared properly. So let's talk about that nutritional value and how to prepare coffee to get the full taste and nutritional benefits. So number one, coffee is, you know, we know it has caffeine, but it is loaded with polyphenols and bioflavonoids that are an incredibly rich source of antioxidants. It's even been thought that coffee may be the highest source of antioxidants in the human diet when it's prepared properly because the roasting process will liberate the polyphenols from the green seeds that coffee is made from. And those polyphenols contain the antioxidants, but they only have a certain shelf life once you've roasted your coffee of up to 14 days. And then the nutritional value very much trails off. And the way you roast the coffee actually determines how much nutritional value it will have and how long it's gonna last. So let's let's dive into that a little bit. So what, what we do here in this helpful is we purchase bulk organic green coffee seeds. We're so used to calling coffee, saying coffee beans, but they're actually a seed. And then we roast them and you can roast either a light roast or a medium roast or a dark roast. And, but when the longer the, the seed is exposed to heat, more, more of the oils come up to the surface and it looks like, oh, that's an oily, delicious bean, which it is. But when the oil is exposed to the air, it gets oxidized. So you begin to then use up some of those antioxidants and it loses some of its benefits from a nutritional standpoint. The, the, the roasting process actually liberates the polyphenols from the green seed, as I was saying. And so it is important to roast it. And the light roast has you know, the highest antioxidant content, but not as much flavor as the medium and dark roast. So really the medium is kind of the happy medium in the middle. So it's got the most flavor to nutrient ratio, let's just say. And it's important once you've roasted your bean, you first have to let it off gas for a couple days. So it's really about three days post roasting until day 14 and that that's the window during which time you want to consume that roasted coffee. And then after that, it devitalizes and it actually is dead. You know, it's new nutritional values depleted. And sadly, it's the second most popular beverage in the world next to water and most people are drinking dead coffee. So it's, it's if you're gonna take it seriously as I do, this is what you have to do. So we order green beans and you know, a lot of people have wine in their, in their wine cabinet. I actually have bulk green beans from that, that we source from the coffee bean corral. They have different types of coffee from around the world and most of it's organic, but you have to look for that. It's very important to have organic coffee. And then we take the seed and found this phenomenal roaster after a lot of research and it is the, the SRB, SR800. <laughs> and so we take the green seeds and stick it in the roaster after weighing out the roaster. We put it in the roaster. And now I'm gonna roast this and it actually takes 13 minutes to roast the coffee and I'm gonna just edit that all together. But I think it's gonna be really important to show you little snippets of the green seeds turning to dark yellow and then to light brown and then to dark darker as you go along. Okay, so, so you can hear the coffee roaster behind me. So there's three stages to coffee roasting. And this is the first stage. And this is where they just put the, the green seeds in and they're basically warming up. It's almost like popping popcorn. Not much happens in the beginning because the seeds are just getting warm. All right, so now we're four minutes into the roast. We're in this magical second stage, and this is what's liberating all the taste from the seed. And I wish we were here because it's starting to smell so good in here. And you can kind of already see that the color is changing. It's going from a kind of bluish green to this dark yellow. And, and this is the stage where all of the, the, the flavor that is kind of becoming elaborate. Now we're entering stage three, and you can really start to see the color difference here. We, we jack the temperature up, and now you're going to start to hear the, the seeds actually pop, a lot like popcorn. So you're going to start hearing that, and the holes will, will pop off of it. But this is where you're, you're completing the roast, and you're going to know when is the right time to stop it. Okay, so now we're about 10 minutes in, and we're in the final stage of the roast, and you can really see this is 
psychochemical process you're turning this into something entirely different and it's pretty beautiful so anyway now we're going to be cooling the beans down in the last part of the roast which is a total of 13 minutes the roast is done and now we're cooling the beans so this is a fan under here and it's it's cooling cooling them back down so they don't overheat so you should smell it in here it smells so good we've completed the roast and if you look, we've completely transformed the bean. This is true alchemy. So they actually puff up in the roasting process like popcorn does. So it smells amazing. This is a perfect medium roast. So the roasting process is step one in a three-part process of magic. So, so we've talked about the roasting process, which is so vital and important. And now that I've done this, this will let these sit for three days before I do anything with them. And then I'll make sure that these beans or seeds are consumed within 14 days. But right here, what I have is some, some beans that were seeds that were roasted um, three days ago. And so what I like to do with them is grind them. So we have a great grinder here and you can see it, it just, um, we grind it down. And then this is how I love to consume it. So this is a cold brew maker. So what we did is we took the ground, the, the ground uh, seeds that, that are three days old and we filled this kind of ground receptacle. And then we put water, which is purified up here. And, and then you can see that you can adjust the drip rate here of the water. And we have a nice slow drip rate that allows the water to spend as much time with the grounds as possible before it, it trickles down this pathway into the collection container. So this process is uh, usually completed in about six hours. And there's a lot of coffee that ends up down here, but we put this in the refrigerator and it lasts for the week then. And I take it to the office and share it with the people that work there. And it's my favorite way to consume it. Okay, sometimes I'll use this for the, the three day plus old bean that have been roasted, and this is amazing. But most of the time lately, I really much prefer consuming it in a cold brew form. The benefits are it's low acid, and it, it just seems to have even greater nootropic effect. And for me, it has less of a stimulating effect. So it's like, for me, I feel like my brain turns on, but my body doesn't feel wigged out in any way. And so that's step two in this magical process. And then the next thing we're gonna cover is organic macadamia nut milk. So what we do here is we order in bulk raw organic macadamia nuts, and they're amazing. And what I do is I put it in the Vitamix. So about this much, fill the Vitamix up about like that. And then put purified water, fill it all the way to the top. Now these macadamia nuts are dry. I haven't soaked them or anything. So then I take it over here to the Vitamix. And of course you wanna really make sure you have the lid on. I don't know if you've done that before, but it makes a huge mess if you don't. And now it's gonna be very noisy, so you'll just hear it for a second, but I'm gonna I'm going to blend it for two minutes. So what I did is I had this on all the way on high. So the high setting on the Vitamix plus all the way over to 10 for about two minutes to completely pulverize the macadamia nuts. So now I'm gonna carefully take this lid off because sometimes it kind of almost whips up and overflows and it looks like it hasn't. Okay, perfect. You gotta come see this. This is so creamy and all it is is macadamia nuts and water blended for two minutes. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna strain it and this is kind of like the old school way of going about it. I've heard now there's some new machines that can do this for you and I will probably upgrade at some point. But here we start the straining process. I've got this over a bowl, and this, this takes maybe about three to five minutes, but I have discovered that if I kind of oscillate it like this, before I use the plunger, it really gets most of the milk out. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna shorten this up. You're not gonna watch this whole process, but it takes about five to 10 minutes max. So now I take the plunger and I just push the rest of the milk out, and in about five minutes, I'll come back to you with the finished product. Okay, so it's been about five minutes, and what we have here is some creamy, absolutely gorgeous macadamia nut milk. 
and what's left over is the pulp, which also tastes really yummy. So I'm gonna to try to figure out what I wanna do with that. And if you have any ideas, uh, leave them in your comments below. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna flavor this milk a little bit, just subtly. And you don't have to, because it's amazing as it is, but I think it's even better with what I do to it. So I'm gonna show you what I do. And I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract that's organic. Put that in, it looks like a little more than a tablespoon, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna do a heaping tablespoon of manuka honey. So, you know, when you think about it, this, this lasts for the week. So it's really per cup of coffee, there's not that much, that many grams of carbohydrate, let's say per cup, but it really adds such a nice flavor and manuka honey is so good for you. So it's, I, I love putting it in here. So. <laughs> okay. All right. I also put about a heaping tablespoon of raw cacao. Love the way that tastes and also has a lot of health benefits. And then a, a pinch or two of Himalayan sea salt. I'm just blending it for like 30 seconds. Okay, and what you have is so tasty. Creamy, nut milk, no seed oils, not, no gums and fillers and additives. It's just so creamy and delicious. Oh my God, mm, it tastes amazing. So what we've done here is we've taken the second most consumed beverage on planet Earth and turned it from something just mediocre and devitalized into something amazing and absolutely nutritious for you, a powerful nootropic and superfood. So. You can do it too, it's not that hard. And what we've done is made enough for the whole week. So this is just a small portion of the cold brew. But now let's try it. Put a little bit in here. Just a little bit of this. Beautiful milk, it's so thick and creamy right now. Wow. Okay, let's try it. Cheers. Amazing. Oh my God. It's so delicious. I know you're gonna love it.